Hot's a funny word. It can refer to the temperature of tap water or a blowtorch. This is more the latter. Let's drive the 2013 Ford Focus ST and check the tech. Now, the all-new ST is called that because it's built on the all-new Focus. This is now a global car. No more of that envy of the cooler one they get in England or somewhere. Some visual cues for the spotter, the Aston Martin-esque front mouth, the big Y-spoke alloy wheels and nice low stance, subtle but effective body kit, the twinned outlet exhaust in that tidy rump. Those are among the most obvious cues. As are these Recaro sports seats. These guys are real narrow. Try them before you order them. Look at these bolsters, real deep and so narrow, it's like they're meant for sitting sideways, not facing forward. These are not flexible or adjustable. They really grab you in there. I kind of barely fit. Luckily, these are also available in all black. You don't have to suffer the indignity of yellow or blue inserts. Now, you'll recognize my Ford Touch up here on the optional 8-inch color LCD. This is part of a package. And unless I'm imagining things, Ford's definitely been working on optimizing the touch response. That's one of the biggest gripes folks have had about this system, is that it's a little too slow or doesn't get it every time. That seems to be improving quite a bit, even from a few months ago. But you know what's really interesting about my Ford Touch that people don't always realize? It's not so much about what's on the screen, but what's around it. This is what I've noticed driving a lot of Ford cars. Depending on these bezels and how deeply this thing is inset and whether your hand is going to bump into this stuff, that dramatically changes its usefulness. Because notice what they do. They use every inch around the perimeter of the screen. There are very few places where they don't go right to the edge with things and the buttons are fairly small, so precise hand-on contact is critical. But look, if you've got this plastic stuff here getting in your way, or if it's too far to reach, even for a long-arm guy like me, that ends up being a bigger problem than what's actually on the screen. And of course, Sync always has great array of sources, from satellite radio, optical disc, USB, Bluetooth streaming, SD card, Really well optioned for that kind of thing, but notice a couple of these are options. HD radio you have to option in, and the same thing goes for satellite radio. Beyond that, we're talking pretty standard focus cabin stuff, high trim focus cabin stuff. Great materials all around, I think. This is different though on the ST, that eyebrow display of three performance gauges, oil temperature on the left, turbo boost, and your oil pressure. That's unique to this trim level, of course. Oh, this is new. Little street signs floating in midair instead of some of those tortured diagonal reading lines of font. This is very good at a glance. And finally, this little screen here in the middle is very simple on this car. It doesn't have all these elaborate different layers of how you can set the vehicle up. It's basically a glorified trip odometer. At no point are you going to be able to get an ST that is really kind of stripped or bare bones. And that's an interesting part of the story. This vehicle's got real hot hatch cred, but at all times, it's a very civilized focus. Okay, into the ST engine bay where things are very interesting. Now, under here lies a two liter inline four cylinder all aluminum engine that is very similar in its architecture to any old garden variety focus. It's got direct injection and turbocharging. And you're thinking, oh, that's an EcoBoost motor. But they pervert it in this formula, and that's good for us. They tune it for performance as opposed to efficiency. So that means numbers of 252 on the horsepower. That's about 100 more than a base focus. 270 on the torque. That's 124 more foot pounds. These are life changing numbers, folks. Zero to 60 in about 6.6 .6 seconds. Front wheel drive only, by the way. And the MPG, while well down from an EcoBoost car, isn't bad. 2332 for a hot little hatch. So the first sin of a high performance front wheel drive car is usually this wheel hop. The front end comes up, the front wheels get all pigeon-toed, it all starts to spin and kind of go nowhere, and then it finally bites and shatters left and right. It's a real undignified mess. This car doesn't really exhibit much of that, if any, and I'm driving on a wet bed. It's doing rather well. Electronically controlled front differential. As I mentioned, front wheel drive only on this car. There's no sort of all-wheel drive rally version yet, though. We love that. What I'm also struck by on this ST is how there is, and I rarely say this, 
No turbo lag. I'm not finding any. You can actually read it in the boost gauge. When you tip in, there's boost there immediately. But most importantly, you feel it in the vehicle dynamics. This is also a fun car, whoa, to toss around. It does very nicely turning on center. It's just dialed in that way. I don't know if you can hear that very well, but this car has one of the great engine notes in an affordable car. Different than exhaust note. Any car can be loud. It's much harder to get an engine to sound good. Most manufacturers just kind of cover it up, hope it all goes away. But this car has a great engine note when you get on it, and then it's very quiet when you're off it, so it can be an everyday car. Now, controversially, you can only get this car with a six-speed manual. Uh, the purists, the driving enthusiasts, will say, well, of course, it's an ST. But in this day and age, that's limiting sales. There's no two ways about it. So I wouldn't be surprised if they get like a sport automatic or a, you know, a dual clutch, really, on this car in the uh, succeeding model year. That would make sense to me. It's a good transmission, nice clutch engagement, nothing too light or rubbery. The throws on the gearbox are a little long for my tastes, but the engagement is real clean and positive. All right, let's price this 2013 ST. Base is 24.5 delivered, but you're not quite seen that style yet. You gotta add 2,400 bucks for the inelegantly named Package 201A. That gets you HD radio, satellite radio, the eight inch LCD with my Ford Touch, kinda want that, 10 speaker Sony audio, dual zone automatic temperature control, and those Recaro seats. Hmm, no. For another 2,200 bucks, you can get the navigation as part of a package, but note that you can a la carte that navigation by just buying an SD card from the Ford dealer. I think I would do that.